In this video, I'll show you how to automatically identify trend lines on price data with Python. It uses a unique algorithm I created to optimally fit trend lines that I have not seen anywhere else. I'll first explain how the algorithm works, then show the Python code so you can try it for yourself. The visualization you're currently seeing is the upper and lower trend lines fit to the most recent 24 candles of data. The algorithm has only a single parameter, the number of candles to fit a trend line on. I'll be publishing some videos showing trading strategies that use this algorithm in the future, so subscribe to not miss those. There are two versions of this algorithm I'll show. They're nearly identical. One fits the trend lines with respect to the high and low prices of the candles shown in white, the other fits the trend lines using just the closing price, shown in blue. Let's start with the closing price version. Here is a section of closing price data with 72 samples. We'll start with the lower trend line. The first step is to find the line of best fit. This is your standard least squared error line. The next step is to find the data point that is the furthest below the line. In this case, it's here marked with a red X. I'll call this the pivot point. Now we can adjust the best fit lines intercept so that the line goes through the pivot point. From here we use a gradient descent to find the optimal slope of all lines going through the pivot point to find the line that has the minimum squared distance from the data while also being below every point in the data. The same process is used to find the upper trend line. We find the pivot point that is the highest above the line of best fit, then find the line going through the pivot point that is the closest to the data while also being above each point. Let's look at the Python code that implements this algorithm. The full code is available on GitHub and is linked in the description. We'll start with fitting trend lines on the closing price. This is implemented in the function fit trend line single. It takes a single array as input. The trend lines are fit to the data in this array. First, we get the slope and intercept of the line of best fit with NumPy's polyfit function. We use them to get the value of the line at each point in the array. We find the pivot points for both trend lines using NumPy's argmax and argmin functions, which return the index of the maximum and minimum values in an array, respectively. The main work of the algorithm is done in the optimize slope function. But first, let's look at the check trend line function. This is used by the optimizing function. This function assesses a potential trend line. We pass a boolean specifying if it is the upper or lower trend line. I use the support and resistance terminology for this. It also takes the pivot point index, the slope being tested, and the data. We first find the intercept of the line passing through the pivot point with the given slope. We subtract the data from the line, then test to ensure that it is less than or greater than all the data points depending on what type of trend line it is. I used a small value instead of zero for this check. This is because floating point error occasionally causes issues. If the trend line is invalid, the function returns a negative value as a flag. Otherwise, we return the sum of squared differences. This is what we will be minimizing. Now to the optimized slope function, which minimizes the sum of squared differences with gradient descent. We pass the type of trend line, the pivot point, and the initial slope value for the optimization, which is the slope value of the line of best fit, which we already found. First, we set the slope unit, which is an ad hoc amount based on the data to change the slope by. This is multiplied by the current step variable. The current step variable will be decreased as the optimization converges. We assess the initial slope with our check trend line function and begin the optimization loop. It runs until the step size has reached the minimum value. To find the derivative, I use numerical differentiation. We increase the slope by a very small amount and see if the error went up or down. This gives us the direction to change the slope. If increasing the slope increased the error, we make a new slope by decreasing the current best slope by the current step multiplied by the slope unit, and vice versa. We test our new slope value. If the new slope value created either an invalid trend line or had a larger distance from the data, we reduce our step size and move to the next iteration. If the new slope was an improvement, we record it and reassess our derivative on the next iteration. And that's it. We return the slope and intercept of the optimized trend line. To fit trend lines on high and low data, we need to take in the high, low, and close. We find the line of best fit using the close and find our upper and lower pivots using the high and low price this time. Then when we call optimize slope, we pass in the low price and high price for each trend line. And I'll show a quick example of how you can use this on price data. We load some data from a CSV. This is daily Bitcoin data. I take the logarithm of the prices to have normalized scaling. We set a look back. I chose 30 days. We loop through each candle in the data set and pass our 30 most recent candles into our fit trend lines function. We record the upper and lower trend line slope at each candle. Again, use the support and resistance terminology. This creates a pretty cool indicator. Now we can see how the trend line slopes change throughout time. 
The algorithm presented offers a unique approach for automating trend lines. Its main benefit is it has only one parameter and can work on any size and section of input data. Its main drawback is that it is computationally expensive. If you download the code for yourself, you will notice it takes a decent amount of time to compute every candle's trend lines, even on daily data. I originally implemented this algorithm in C++ and re-implemented it in Python for this video. C++ is probably more appropriate for this algorithm. If you were to use the Python implementation on a lower time frame, such as hourly or 15 minute data, it might take too long and you probably will get bored. Anyways, I'll be showing off applications and trading strategies using this algorithm in the future, so subscribe to see that. Thanks for watching. Bye.